this video, we'll look at a theoretical justification for relative acidity and basicity from a different perspective, namely from the relative stability of a positive charge. Here we'll see that the same players are involved, that is the atom effect, resonance effect, induction, orbital effect, but we'll generally need to reverse our thinking because we're thinking about a deficiency of electron density. Here we have a general example comparing two different acids, H2A plus and H2B plus. Notice that in this case, we're looking at a positively charged acid reacting with water. In both cases, hydronium ion are formed. However, the conjugate bases, HA and HB, are neutral. Therefore, our focus in terms of predicting the relative acidity will not be to look at the relative stability of a negatively charged conjugate base, but rather we need to focus on the positively charged conjugate acids. As we shall see, the more stable the positive charge of our reactant, the less acidic is the conjugate acid. So in a sense, this is a reverse in thinking. We're focusing on the reactant and we're focusing on the positive charge. The more stable the positive charge, the less reactive is that reactant. And then correspondingly, the more basic is the conjugate base. So for instance, if H2A turns out to be the more stabilized positive charge, then correspondingly, HA would be the more basic conjugate base. We will still be considering, as I mentioned before, the same four factors, although most of our discussion will be about the atom effect, resonance, and induction. It's helpful to run through a couple of examples to allow you to see how this works. First of all, again, the atom effect, but here we're looking at cationic atoms of similar size. So the classic example is to compare nitrogen and oxygen. So we have a protonated amine, we have a protonated alcohol. Now, we have a positive charge. Usually, for atoms the same size, we'll want to think about electronegativity. As you might imagine, the atom that has a higher electronegativity will be less stable. The atom with a lower electronegativity will be more stable. So therefore, our protonated oxygen is a stronger acid. Oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. The positive charge is less stable. Therefore, this is a stronger reactant. The protonated amine is a weaker acid, as that positive charge is not quite as destabilized, if you will. And we can talk about the conjugate bases. The amine would be a stronger conjugate base, the alcohol would be a weaker conjugate base. So in conclusion, for cationic atoms of similar size, the higher the electronegativity will result in a less stable and stronger conjugate acid. Oxygen has a higher electronegativity, therefore that positive charge is less stable. The protonated alcohol is the stronger acid. We also need to look at, in terms of the atom effect, cationic atoms of different size. So here we have a, the protonated alcohol again and a protonated sulfur compound, which would be called a thiol, so a protonated thiol. Now in this case, positive charge means, of course, a deficiency in electron density. Having a deficiency in electron density, that is having too few electrons over a larger size is less stable. Therefore, we conclude that the protonated thiol is the stronger acid. S is larger than oxygen. The positive charge is therefore less stable. We have less electrons on that larger particle. Correspondingly, therefore, the protonated alcohol would be the weaker acid. That positive charge is not quite as unstable. We would expect the alcohol to be the stronger conjugate base and the thiol to be the weaker conjugate base. So for cationic atoms of different size, the larger atom is less stable, and this will result in a stronger conjugate acid. 
it's helpful to summarize these two ideas. So this diagram is associated with looking at the atom effect when the atom has a positive charge. Going down the periodic table, we have a larger cationic atom. This larger cationic atom would be less stable, and that would result in a stronger conjugate acid. In turn, across the periodic table, the cation with a higher electronegativity will result in a less stable and stronger conjugate acid. Other things that we need to look at is the stability of a positive charge when resonance is involved. So comparing these two conjugate acids, we see that in both cases, the positive charge is on an oxygen. In the case of the conjugate acid at the bottom, there is the possibility for stability by resonance. And so if I draw in a lone pair here and show my curved arrow, we can see that there is stabilization by resonance for this positive charge. The positive charge sits both on the OH group as well as the oxygen, in, in a sense, as part of an ester further down, whereas the conjugate acid at the top has no stabilization by resonance. If the positive charge is not as stabilized, it is therefore more reactive. Therefore, our stronger acid is, in fact, found at the top here. The positive charge is less delocalized, it is less stable, that acid is more reactive. Correspondingly, the weaker acid has the more stabilized positive charge, and we can also make comments about the corresponding conjugate bases. Our ester is a stronger conjugate base compared to our ketone. Again, that has to do with the stabilization of our acids. Definitely, the protonated ester at the carbonyl group is the more stabilized positive charge. So in conclusion, resonance will stabilize a positive charge, which results in a weaker conjugate acid. Moving forward, we can look at the effect of induction. Now I will warn you, many students get this effect mixed up. And this is because we often associate induction with stabilization of a charge. The inductive effect, pulling electron density along sigma bonds, will stabilize a negative charge because we have an excess of electron density. However, if we have a deficiency in electron density, induction does not stabilize. So comparing these two conjugate acids, you can see in both cases a protonated oxygen. However, in the bottom case, we have electron withdrawing fluorine groups. This will make the positive charge less stable. Therefore, a stronger acid will be this conjugate acid at the bottom. Electron withdrawing fluorine removes electron density from the oxygen. The positive charge is less stable, a stronger acid. Of course, correspondingly, the protonated alcohol will be the weaker acid. The alcohol itself will be the con stronger conjugate base. And the fluorine substituted alcohol will be the weaker conjugate base. So be careful with this inductive effect. Cations, which are destabilized by a nearby electronegative atom, will result in a stronger conjugate acid. However, it is possible to stabilize by induction, but not by a highly electronegative group. So for instance, if we look at this example, we see protonated nitrogens with different degrees of alkyl groups attached. So in the first case, we have a primary amine or primary protonated amine. In the second case, we have a tertiary protonated amine. Positive charges are stabilized by alkyl groups. Therefore, the top conjugate acid is the stronger acid because it's less stabilized by electron donation. The bottom conjugate acid is more stabilized. It's therefore a weaker acid. And correspondingly, the tertiary amine is a stronger conjugate base. The primary amine is a weaker conjugate base. Cations are stabilized by nearby alkyl groups, which will result in a weaker conjugate acid.